Hello everyone, it's Valerie from Stampin' with Valerie and I hope you are excited about this video. I am. I'm going to go through some Stamparatus tips, tricks, and techniques. So the first thing I want to show you is when you get your Stamparatus you have two plates. You're not going to have this little paper. This is something extra you have to order or cut your own little scraps if you want. You have a mat and you have this. This is magnetic. So you put your mat on there and the, having the paper on there is great because it gives you those measurements again and keeps your mat from getting dirty. Now you have two magnets. Now I've taken my magnets and wrapped them in this iridescent washi tape that I found and put a little, um, it's kind of a plasticky washi tape so it doesn't rip. But these magnets are super strong. You do not want them to touch, so always set them apart from each other. That is literally rule number one because they will snap together really fast and they can break and chip and things like that. As you can see, there's one of mine that is chipped. It's this one right here. You probably might not be able to see it since I've wrapped it in the washi tape. Um, but it did, it happened to me and it, the little end broke off. So. The first trick I want to show you, and I'm gonna be using the Wishes and Wonder stamp set and the North Pole dies, is how to um, die cut all of your deer first and then stamp them. I know it sounds like magic, right? With the Stamparatus, it kind of is. So your plates fit by sliding down into those hinges and you have two of them. And now you can turn your Stamparatus any direction that you want. I mean, I personally like it this way. I'm right-handed, but left-handers may want to put it this way and that's just fine too. Just wanted to make sure you know that. All right, so let's get our stamp out. We're gonna use that deer stamp. And so what you're gonna do with your die is you are going to make a template. You are gonna take a piece of Whisper White cardstock or any color cardstock that you want you're gonna die cut that deer out. You're going to put this on your Stamparatus. Go ahead and magnet it down. And remember, you can always use some washi tape too. Now, the only issue I have with washi tape, and it doesn't pertain to Whisper White, it comes off Whisper White pretty easy, is when I use it, on other colors of cardstock, it kind of rips the cardstock off as I'm peeling it off. So I personally only like to use it with Whisper White, but it's your preference. So take your deer stamp because you know you're gonna wanna stamp inside this image. Put your deer in there and you'll feel it kind of slide into place because of the raised rubber that's on it, obviously. Take one of your plates, it doesn't matter which one grab your deer. Now, just to test it to make sure it's gonna stamp correctly, you're gonna ink it up and then stamp right on that grid paper. Now, with the red rubber, you don't necessarily need this mat, but I leave it in, I kinda like it. It doesn't, you know, bother me at all. So now look at how perfectly that stamped inside there. So now you've got all your little die cut pieces. I've got like three different ones in soft suede here. Ink it back up. You lay that soft suede one right in that empty space and you've got your perfectly stamped deer. You don't have to stamp them on paper and then die cut them out. You can die cut a bunch of them, stamp them all at once. and then you'll be ready for making whatever cards you wanna make. This can be done with any of the dies and stamps that go with them. So it doesn't obviously have to just be this deer. You can do it with any of them. So there, now I have three deer all ready for Christmas cards. So I'm just gonna take this template off and I'm gonna save that template. I'm just gonna put that inside my stamp case or with my dies most likely with my stamp case because it'll probably stay better in there. Um, but that way you have it to use over and over again. So 
even cutting it out maybe with Whisper White Thick is a good idea. It's completely up to you. Then just take your deer stamp, use your chamois, clean your deer stamp up. If you don't have a chamois, the chamois is one of the best things that we have at Stampin' Up! right now. I love it. It's a perfect stamp cleaner. It only uses water, so it's fantastic. All right, I'm gonna close up this soft suede so I do not end up sticking my arm in it. The next technique I wanna do is called hinging. And with hinging, you can make a perfect, wonderful background like this where all of your sentiments are straight and even or images, whatever you wanna use for your background or whatever you're making. So I'm going to be using a piece of soft seafoam cardstock and I'm just gonna put a magnet here at the bottom. Now, if I was making a bunch of these, here's what I would do before I even got started. I would take a red Sharpie or another color Sharpie or whatever and just make a mark so I know, kind of trace around the top edge, even the bottom edge if you want to, so you know right where your cardstock is going to be. That way, when you take this off and you still have your stamp, you know where to put your next piece of cardstock. Because if you're stamping, you know, 15 of these, you wanna be able to place them on there every time. So I'm gonna put my other magnet at the top. Like I said, I'm not gonna use washi tape just because I feel like it rips the paper and you may not be able to see it, but it kind of ripped the top of this one. So that's why I'm using the magnet for both on this one. We're going to use Wishing you the happiest season of all. I'm gonna put it toward the top and I'm going to stand up just because I wanna make sure I get it right up there where I want it. And then you can use these grid lines to make sure your sentiment is straight. It looks a little bit crooked. Let me just turn it just a little bit. Let's hope I've got it straight now. Then use your plate again, and a lot of times I use this plate only unless I'm doing more than one image. And we will start with Cherry Cobbler. I thought the Cherry Cobbler and Garden Green looked fantastic on this soft sea foam. So now we're just going to flip it down again. And as you can see, I'm just doing the cherry cobbler to start with. And now a nice tip, just so that you know, you can't see it, maybe not be on, I don't know if you can see it. There's a stamp set sitting over here that this plate keeps laying on. But if you put another um, stamp pad underneath here, that holds it in place and keeps your plate from kind of bouncing. If your plate goes all the way to the table, it kind of bounces when you're trying to ink it up. So that's just another little helpful hint. Once we get all of these on there, and I'm gonna take this magnet off until I get this bottom one done, just to make sure the magnet is not in the way. And it would have been, cause that one's kind of really, really at the bottom. Pull this back all the way to the top Clean that ink off because you you don't want um, the cherry cobbler. For the next part, you want garden green. So now lay this back down here because we're going in between. From where I'm sitting, that looks pretty even. We'll open up our garden green and then stamp those all the way down. Now, obviously, if you have a thicker sentiment, um, I think my stamp was a little bit wet still from where I cleaned it. I should have used a um, paper towel on it maybe because that just kind of ran right there. So whenever I use this for a card, I gotta make sure I cover that spot up. And again, super easy, just keep hinging all the way down. And like I said, you can use sentiments, you can use images, however you want to do it. But I figured, you know, 
while I'm doing this video, I might as well make some of my backgrounds for Christmas cards or whatever I'm for scrapbooking. This would be cute on a scrapbook page even. So there's that one. We're gonna clean that off. And because my chamois is a little bit more wet than I thought it was, I'm just gonna take a paper towel and just lightly dab that. I'm not really gonna like dry it and get fuzz all over it, but just dab it. Now I wanna show you one other fun thing with hinging, and I'm gonna use the special delivery stamp set. And I'm gonna place the cardstock at this bottom. See, this piece is a little bit bigger than this one. I'm gonna put this on an angle. So let's see what happens. I've never done it on an angle like this, and I was kind of looking at it going, hmm, let's see how that works out when you're stamping on an angle. Like, how pretty does it look? So I'm just gonna use Garden Green for this. And then we're gonna hinge it one. Look at how pretty that is. Love that. So you can go down the whole side of a card on an angle with a stamp and get a gorgeous stamped image. We'll do one more, fill it in while we're at it. Oops, didn't hinge. Love that, so that's so cute. All right, so that's just a different take on hinging with, you know, doing on an angle to make a little bit different, little bit different look to your hinging. Now, what would also be fun would be to take another stamp and maybe the North Pole stamp and you could start it up here and do part of it and then when you hinge, it would go all the way down and that would be a wonderful look to a card as well. All right, so that was our second technique, hinging. I'm gonna set these aside and we can get started on our third technique. Now this technique, I'm going to use um, a lot of stamps for. This is the Itty Bitty Christmas stamp set and what I love about this is they're all holiday sentiments, but you can place them on a piece of cardstock. Stamp them all at once, or you can stamp them individually to make a fun background. Now I don't have a background done for this. So what you're gonna do is first, we're just gonna lay them all out Actually, let's do them one at a time. So let's do the Merry Christmas and let's stamp, stamp that in real red. We'll stamp a few in real red and then we'll go to a different color. So then just take that one off. Now, if you were doing, um, actually I don't have to really take it off. I'm just gonna clean it and dry it, and it doesn't really need to be cleaned, I guess, if I'm using all real red for this. Then we're gonna add Very Merry. We'll add Joy to the World, and some of them are gonna be on this, their side. Some of them, whoops, <laughs> some of them will be straight. Let's see what else we got. Let's do Season's Greetings. I'm gonna take this magnet off on the bottom just so I can get season's greetings right at the bottom. And this is another, you know, background thing. And you can do this differently. You can color each one with a marker and then stamp them. Let's see how that one looks. Perfect. And then let's do right here. Lots of love at Christmas. You know, that sticky kind of sticks to your fingers sometimes. Maybe believe up here in this corner. There. 
that would have worked better had I done that to begin with. And then we'll just ink all of these in real red. And now the beautiful thing is even though I re-inked that, it's gonna go back on there, although I moved my paper just a little bit, I forgot to put my magnet back on. So if you move your paper, obviously it's not gonna stamp directly, but if you don't move your paper, it's not gonna stamp like that. So now we're gonna take some of these other images or sentiments from our house to yours. We'll do, that one's too long. Peace and happiness down this side. Blessed Christmas wishes. Happy holidays. No peeking till Christmas. Happy Christmas. And we're not gonna use all of them. Um, this is just to give you an idea. And then we'll stamp those. I'm gonna wanna, I wanna use the shaded spruce and it's underneath my pad here in shaded spruce. So now we've got the other piece. Look at that, perfect. Now you could take this off, add another piece of cardstock, make sure you've got it hooked down with your magnets. Don't let it move this time. <laughs> like I did. We'll go ahead and stamp the real red. And this is wonderful when you're doing a group of cards, like obviously, especially at Christmas. Then do your garden green. How fun is that? So that's just a wonderful way to get another background for your card or even just the front of your card because then you can stamp little images in here if you want to, um, however you want to do it. So that's just another fun little tips and tricks. All right, let me clean these off and get these back in this stamp set. I might need to get some of my wipes out because sometimes when you use real red and I'm sure you've noticed this it kind of splotches everywhere just because it's such a strong color that even though you've wiped it down I've like I've still got some on there and I want to get that off from here and that is not just real red, a lot of the red-ish colors or dark purples can do that. So I always try to keep baby wipes handy when I am doing anything with the Stamparatus. Another little handy tip or wet paper towel, anything that you can use to wipe off your plate and even sometimes wipe your stamps with, which the non I think most baby wipes are non-alcohol based these days anyway, um, but make sure you don't have any alcohol in whatever you're using. So I've just got these Huggies Natural Care. They work good. Clean that plate. I'll clean that one because I've got some green on there. And then I'll just do a quick dry so that way my stamps will stick when we do the next little thing. All right, background stamps. Background stamps work amazingly on the Stamparatus. We're gonna use another piece of Whisper White. We're gonna be using a lot of Whisper White today. I'm gonna clip that on there. Now, the only thing I'm not gonna do for this is hook it down because I want this whole piece to be covered with my background stamp. And depending on which background stamp you use, we're going to do one in Whisper White and we're going to do one in Crumb Cake as well. We're going to use Crumb Cake ink and we're going to use the Birch stamp set. So I'm just going to lay this down and make sure it's straight. And what I mean by that is I'm going to check on these 
corners to make sure my corners are straight and it's straight down these grid lines. Then do the same with your paper. Make sure your paper is straight. And always make sure your background stamp goes over the edges if that's how you want it, if you want the whole thing covered. So we're just gonna ink it up with crumb cake. Press down and you've got a perfectly straight background image on here. Now, I know when I try to do this with just the larger blocks, I always it always ends up crooked. And so for me, using the Stamparatus for background stamps is perfect. We're gonna put that piece of crumb cake right in that same spot where I marked it on that grid paper. And now we have two perfect, perfectly stamped backgrounds. How wonderful is that? We'll take this wipe. We're gonna clean this up real quick with the wipe. That's another, especially background stamps. The wipes work fantastic for cleaning them off just because you can do just a couple of swipes and be done with it. I'm gonna put this back over here with the case. All right, I've got my list in front of me of different things to tell you um, and to show you. So the next thing we're gonna use are three colors, So Saffron, Pumpkin Pie, and Poppy Parade. And we are gonna make this gorgeous little rainbow sentiment using the ridiculously awesome stamp set. So we'll grab our stamp. Then we can grab another piece of Whisper White because like I said, we're gonna use a lot of Whisper White. And because I want this to go a different way, I want it in the center of this card. I'm going to put this here. And if I were making more than one of these, again, I would mark my edges, but I'm only making this one, so I don't need to mark my edges for this. Pick up my stamp. Now always start with your lightest color. So we're gonna start with So Saffron. We're gonna do that on the top of this one and kind of down a little bit into the word ridiculously. Then we're gonna take pumpkin pie. Now, if you get a little bit of So Saffron on your pumpkin pie, it's not gonna hurt your pumpkin pie ink because it's a lighter color. Now, I wouldn't recommend refilling this with So Saffron, obviously, but stamping like this and getting a little bit on there is not gonna hurt it. Next, we'll do Poppy Parade. And as you can see, I'm gonna go right over some of this with just Poppy Parade. And it's going right over that pumpkin pie and it's gonna be just fine. Now look, you can see I needed a little bit more pumpkin pie right there. And because I don't wanna go back over everything, I'm just gonna use a marker and I'm gonna fill in, oh, I need the brush tip. I'm gonna fill in some of this with pumpkin pie here. And then I'll stamp right back down and because it's in the same spot, it's just gonna fill in some of those little things and I'm not going to get that um, wonky image if I tried to just stamp that with a regular stamp. So how fun is that? And if you have a larger sentiment, that's about the largest sentiment I currently own. So that's why I chose that one. But if you have a larger one, go ahead and use it. It makes a fantastic, beautiful rainbow effect for a card. We're gonna do a second way to make a rainbow card using just markers. Now I used a couple of smaller stamps for this get this stamp out of the way and we're going to start with the green markers that i chose and i have um soft sea foam pear pizzazz old olive and mossy meadow and we are going to take this poly stamp from that stamp set i've just got a small piece of cardstock here and I'm just gonna put it up right there by that corner. 
I'm gonna lay the stamp on here. I'm gonna pick it up, but then I'm gonna take it off from here because I wanna color it and it's easier if I can see it. So I'm going to start with some soft sea foam and it's really light. You can't even see where I'm putting it on there, but I am putting it on there. I can see it. I'm gonna go over it a couple times just to make sure. Then I'm gonna do pear pizzazz. And pear pizzazz, I can just go over a little bit and go over that soft sea foam just a little bit. Then we'll go with old olive because that's a little bit darker. And I'm gonna to try to color all to the left with this one because that's how I started coloring. And that way if I go over the pear pizzazz a little bit with that old olive, it's perfect. Then we'll go with Mossy Meadow. And always use your brush tip for markering when you're markering stamps. And now, the key to doing something like this when you're markering is now I need to just breathe on it real quick. <sighs> the moisture in your breath reactivates any of that ink that has started to dry. How pretty is that? Now, like I said, that soft sea foam is really, really light. So it's hard to see it, but it's there. We'll clean that stamp and then we're gonna use some reds to do that North Pole reindeer freight image, which I thought was really pretty done like this. Let me get this one back in here. We'll grab that round North Pole stamp image. And I'm gonna do the same. I'm just gonna take it off from here to do my coloring. So we are going to use let me see if this is, yes, Petal Pink, Flirty Flamingo, Poppy Parade, and Real Red. I always have to check between Petal Pink and Blushing Bride. Those two always get me. So I'm gonna do the Petal Pink at the top, then right underneath it, I'll do some Flirty Flamingo. We'll even get a little bit into that sentiment with North Pole there. Then we'll go Poppy Parade. We'll color the rest of North Pole and a little bit of this. And then we'll go with the Real Red. Again, quick breath, just to reactivate those inks that are kind of drying. And then you've got your perfectly stamped little image. Isn't that great? I love that, the gradiating colors. And I think it would be pretty if you did real red on the top, real red on the bottom, and just Poppy Parade in the middle. I think that would be pretty. And you could do this with any colors that you want. Now remember, you cannot color on your stamps with the Stampin' Blends because these are alcohol-based. You don't wanna color on these because it will ruin your stamps. Those are for coloring in images only. But your stamp and write markers, you can color on your stamps all day long. All right, let me see what else we have set up here. I've got so many little spots with things piled up. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. All of my tips and tricks. All right, so the next one is going to be how to do a mirror image, mirror image stamping. So again, we're gonna start with a piece of Whisper White. Now this one, I'm just gonna stick right up in the corner. And actually I'll put one over here and one right here because those magnets are not gonna interfere with this image. We're gonna use that deer again. And I'm just gonna place him right about there, I think. Now, I'm gonna use Memento to stamp him, but you can use whatever color you want. You know what, actually, I did Memento for this one. Let's do Soft Suede. Let's try it with Soft Suede and see how it works. Now, the trick with this is using your silicone mat, and I'm gonna show you that in just a second. Now, you know you use your silicone mat when you're doing, you got glue, gluing going on and you don't want it sticking to everything you use your silicone mat. 
Now we're just gonna take this off. I'm gonna set him aside. We're gonna grab that silicone mat. Now this side I have used with glue and I don't want glue on my image, so I only use this side for my mirror image stamping. Now, on one side, one corner, you have that little Stampin' Up um, raised symbol. You don't want that up here where you're gonna be stamping. So just go ahead and put your silicone mat down. You don't really need your um, magnets to hold it. So I'm just gonna move those right out of the way and not near each other. So I'm gonna ink up that deer. He's pretty close to where I stamped him earlier. And now we're gonna ink it one more time. If we don't ink it one more time, that soft suede is gonna come out really light when we put it on our deer. So now just lay your deer down. And as I get closer, you can see where you can see the other deer through. Just lay it down, then take a block push down just to make sure you get it all the way pushed down. And now I have two deer that are exactly the same color, mirror image stamped. And then you can just take your chamois or run this underwater, clean that ink off, and you're good to go. Now, if you're doing a bunch of these, you can do them all at once again because you can use your stamparatus. Now, if you were trying this with a block, it would not be easy to stamp it on here, then re-ink it and stamp it again. So that's the beauty of using the Stamparatus. You always get that perfectly colored mirror image. So had I done just this memento, stamped it, then inked this again, used that mat and put it down without inking it the second time, you would have had more of a gray deer over here, not the black that it, he is. So that's another fantastic thing to use your Stamparatus for. Now the next one is a little one I'm still playing with, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. And actually, I am gonna put this under here. I was just gonna layer some extra paper, but I think having that there because it's waterproof is gonna work perfectly. We are going to use the sleigh just because I like playing with this stamp set. You could do this with anything. I think it would be really pretty with floral images maybe. So maybe I should use a floral image, but I'm just gonna use the sleigh just as an example because I wanna stick with this stamp set. We're gonna use first a piece of watercolor paper. So we're gonna put our piece of watercolor paper down here and we'll hook it down with the magnets. Then we're gonna ink it up with, I'm gonna start with just jade. We are also going to need a water spritzer because we're kinda, you know, doing watercolory stuff here. So we're gonna spritz that paper. That's why I put that silicone mat underneath so it can absorb, you know, keep that water from soaking into the mat. So just jade on that watercolor paper. That's already been sprayed. Now I'm just gonna let that dry. And it's gonna take a minute or two. So we're just gonna let that run for just a second like the colors run is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to clean. I'm gonna dab some of that water off. Just dab it, don't spread it around. Then I'm going to dab this image over here. And because I'm going to be stamping now, oh my gosh, I said just jade, but I used shaded spruce. I was gonna do just jade first and then shaded spruce next. So that's okay, we're just going with shaded spruce again. Now before we do that, let's go ahead and dry this just a little bit with the heat tool. You want to make sure it's a little bit drier. Make sure your magnets are still on the edges to hold it down. Now, in a perfect world, I would have let this dry all the way first. Now, your silicone mat is fantastic because it can take the heat 
from the heat tool. That's pretty dry. So now we'll do the stamp this again. And now you kind of have a watercolory sleigh image. Isn't that pretty? Now, of course, it would have been just a little bit different had I used just shade because it's a little bit lighter than shaded spruce. It's actually quite a bit lighter, but that's okay. I still love the way this turned out. Now, after this is completely dry, I would go back and maybe watercolor in a little bit more, but I actually kind of think that looks really pretty like that. So we're gonna do this again, but we're gonna do it with shimmery white cardstock. And since we already did just shaded spruce for the first one, that's what we're doing for this one too. We're just gonna wet it down. We're gonna get that shaded spruce. And now you'll see on the shimmery white, it's the ink is gonna run a little bit more maybe. Let's see. A little bit, kind of in some weird directions. I should have wet this edge down a little bit more. We'll just spray it just so it runs a little bit more on that side. Let it run for just a minute again. We're going to dab this. Then I'm gonna flip this around. We're just gonna soak up some of that ink. Now, because shimmery white doesn't absorb the water as much as the watercolor paper does, you can see it's got some darker spots on it than what the original um, watercolor paper did. So I'm just gonna dry this a little bit again. Now, like I said, in a perfect world, this would be completely dry for sure. This may not be completely dry when we use it. Now you can see the edges curling up. And normally when this happens, I would flip my paper over and hit it with the back with the hot air from the um, heat tool. But because I wanna restamp this right on there, I can't flip that over because it's not gonna be back in the same spot when I put it back down. And there you have one on shimmery white. And now of course you'd have to flatten this out. But there's your watercolor one and there's your shimmery white one. I like them both, but I really think I like the one with the Fluid 100 watercolor paper better. And you could do this with any colors that you want. You could do it with a real red or a cherry cobbler, um, whatever you wanna do. You can see I did one yesterday and I went back and watercolored in the sleigh. And then I tried it with a little bit of crushed curry at first and then I went back with real red because I wanted to see if it would make it look like, you know, Santa's sleigh is glowing and it kind of does. But I'm thinking if you put this on a snowy scene, it's just gonna look like um, yellow snow and we don't want that. So I thought this was a fun little way to use your Stamparatus. That's a little bit different, but using it for a watercoloring and then stamping back over it. So it would be pretty with a, like I said, with a floral image or a sentiment as well. So I hope you enjoyed this Stamparatus video. We learned several different things that we can do. Always take your plates off before you go to put your Stamparatus away. Put the little hinges out. Magnets back on the bottom. I'm just gonna take this off and move it over here for now. And kind of store it like this. If you try to fold these in, they both are not gonna fold in. So today we learned how to use the Stamparatus for background stamping, water coloring, mirror stamping. We did some coloring with markers. We did the rainbow stamping again, not just with markers, but with ink pads. We did some background stamping, several different background stamping because we did this one with the two different colors. We did this one with the hinging. And then we used our 
template to make to stamp our deer that was the actually the first thing we did today so I hope you enjoyed this I am going to make sure I get this posted everywhere so you all can watch it I hope you have a great rest of your day and good luck with your stamparatus comment if you have any questions thank you bye